I just got back from a short vacation and all of the parts that I've been waiting for to put the rear axle back together have finally come in. So we are going to jump into that and get the rear axle built in this video so that we can wrap up this part of the build and move on to the next one. But before we jump into that, I wanna show off my birthday present from my family. I had a birthday a couple weeks ago. They got me a brand new apron to wear in the shop so that I stop ruining my clothes. I've worn it for a couple weeks now. It's really comfortable. It's really nice. I enjoy being able to wipe my hands on it and not getting my pants dirty. So yeah, it's a really, really good little apron. But back to the axle. Where we left off was I had everything cleaned and painted and laid out and ready to be reassembled. Um, the problem was I forgot to order or I ordered some wrong parts. So I had to reorder those and those have come in. So I officially have everything I need to put the rear axle back together. So we're gonna start that process. Um, I have already assembled one side of the axle. So we will now go through and reassemble the other side, starting with pressing all the serrated studs inside the cup and on the axle flange. serrated studs pressed in and the outside seal pressed into the bearing cup the next thing to do is to press the bearing and the sleeve on and then install the last snap ring and to be able to do that I took one of the old sleeves and I turned down the inside so that it is larger than the other ones this bearing is stopped at the top of a shoulder that it needs to be pressed on so it can't go any further than this with the modified sleeve, it allows me to go all the way down without getting stuck. That way I can press on the sleeve, which presses on the inner bearing, which will press down on the shoulder. So I'm gonna get this set up into the press and press the bearing onto the shaft and then come back and put the sleeve on and then put the snap ring on. Two comments before I press the spacer on. The spacer has a 20 degree chamfer on one side and that's because it slides into a radial lip seal and we want to make sure that that is facing towards the inside of the axle so that when we press it into the seal it actually slides in easily. The other side has a very blunt 45 degree chamfer and that is going to be very difficult to press in without messing the seal up. So make sure you have the 20 degree chamfer in the right position and I also put some anaerobic sealant on the shaft as I press the sleeve on and the reason I've done that is space between the shaft and the spacer is a leak path of oil that could come out of the axle there is a radial lip seal on the outside that'll keep the oil from going on the outside, but there's nothing that's stopping the oil from going between the shaft and the spacer. And the little bit of anaerobic sealant between the shaft and the spacer should stop any potential leaks going between that leak path and getting into the bearing cup. So with everything lined up, we're just gonna press this in now. And the last thing to do, 
the slide the snap ring into the snap ring groove. Now that the shafts are fully assembled, we can move to the center of the assembly, which is assembling the differential. We'll start by pressing in the new pinion seal and then installing a new dust protector on the yoke and then installing the pinion shaft and torquing the shaft nut to its proper spec and then installing the diff and setting the backlash. I've set end play and backlash on lots of spur and helical gears, but I have not done the backlash on a spiral gear set. So this will be a first for me and hopefully I don't screw it up. So let's get started at the top and work our way down to the bottom. The pinion seal is really easy to install. Just line it up, tap it in. But before you install that, you need to remember to put the small tapered bearing and the washer that came out back in first. Because once you put this in, you won't be able to get the bearing or that washer out. A few drops of assembly lube on the bearing. And before we press the seal in, we're gonna clean the inside of the housing. It would be ideal to have a tool that presses it in all in one shot evenly, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use a rubber mallet and go around the edge. It's important not to hit this seal as well. Does this rise along the dust shield and adds added protection to keeping contaminants from finding their way into the differential. Placement dust shield. I've already pressed the old dust shield off of this, so I'm going to go back to my press and press this on, and I'll be back in a second. Two thousand years later, I managed to completely mess up the new dust shield that I bought. Uh, the ring inside here is a tool that I made to press it on, and they got stuck together, so I ruined that. And in the process of ruining this, I ru ruined the old yoke. So this is no longer good. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in the recycling. And I already have a new one with the flange and the uh, dust shield already pressed together. doing there was I had these blocks underneath the pinion gear and I was tapping on the flange with a rubber mallet and that was seating the top bearing onto the shaft so the yoke can slide up and down this can still move a little bit and that's because the end play hasn't been properly set yet but all that hammering was just pressing that top bearing down on the shaft now with it mostly together, we're gonna to use the torque wrenches to finish torquing it down. I'm going to go to 90 foot pounds because that's what the internet suggests for using the crush sleeves. And then we'll check the preload with my smaller torque wrench. And the internet says I should feel anywhere between 11 to 18 inch pounds as I try to spin it. I've been back and forth a couple times. This is sitting at about 100 foot-pounds. To be able to measure the preload, I had to get out my torque wrench for my bike stuff. And I have it set to two millimeters and then adapt it up to my 30 millimeter socket. So if you put it on and we give it a little torque, it should click and then move. I've done this a couple times. If I let this sit for a couple seconds and set it just a little bit above two, 
it'll click and then move. But once it gets going, I can drop it a little bit under two and it'll click before it moves. There it is. Since we have two Newton meter increments, I can estimate it's anywhere between one and three, which is gonna be anywhere between 11 and 23 inch pounds. Um, so we're gonna call that good. We can now move on to putting the diff inside the housing. So we've flipped the differential over and I bolted it to this piece of MDF to hold it up to get a good view. And now we can drop the differential in. But before that, we need to remember how everything goes together. The diff only goes in one way, so that's easy to figure out. These adjustment rings, the bearing, and the caps go on a left and right side. And when I disassembled the parts, on one side, I had added a couple hole punches in a non-important part. So on the diff, I added them right here on the outside of the ring, and then on this bearing cap, I put them together. And then I had these two zip tied together so I know that this bearing cup went with this side. So I know that everything on this side goes here and everything on that side goes on that side. So let's clean everything off and then we're gonna put the bearing races back on the diff. We're gonna drop that onto the housing. We're gonna drop the caps on lightly. We're gonna screw the adjustment plates on and then we'll start fine tuning it to get the right backlash. Now that I have everything together, you can see that the diff housing is kind of stiff, stuck in one location, and that's what we want. Since we have the pinion gear locked to the board, that's not gonna move, and that allows me to shift the differential back and forth. And this back and forth movement is what is known as backlash. Backlash is just a fancy term for the space between gears. So if you have one gear up here that has two teeth, and then you have another gear down here that has one teeth. If you mate one side and you have that space between the other two, that is known as the backlash. So what you're witnessing when I shake this back and forth is this one tooth is going back and forth between the two mating teeth. And that's what we want to bring into spec. So the way we do that is by moving this left and right. To measure how much backlash, we'll have a magnetic base with the dial indicator. And as we rotate it, we'll see how much that dial indicator moves and that'll give us our backlash. So let me get my dial indicator set up and then we can start bringing in the backlash together. I have the dial indicator perpendicular to the axis and I would say fairly perpendicular to the slope of the teeth on the gears. And you can see right now we are hitting about 32 thousandths. We need to bring that down to five, which is this much. So this is where it should be. This is where we are now. We need to push the gear towards the middle. I'm gonna loosen this guy. Actually, I'm not gonna loosen this guy because it's already loose. I'm gonna tighten this adjustment screw towards a little bit, and then I need to recenter the dial indicator, and then we can measure the new backlash. I have zeroed out the dial indicator, and now we have about nine and a half. So now I'm gonna push the differential towards me a little bit more and bring that in just under eight. If I go under five, I'll need to let it out a little bit. We're gonna loosen this side a little bit. We're going to tighten this side a little bit. Right 
now with everything locked in, we are at 6,000 and play. So we want to be between five and eight. So we have hit our target. Now I'm going to lock everything down, torque the four bolts to the proper spec, and then make sure that the adjustment plates are well seated. And before we lock everything down with these locking plates, we're gonna check the end play one more time. And if everything looks good, we can move on to the next step, which is assembling all the parts you see behind me. stretch the axles are fully assembled the housing is ready to go the differential is set up and fully assembled so all we have to do is put all of this together um, I have two lip seals I need to put on the ends and I'm going to install those the same way I did for the differential and then we'll drop the differential in torque all these fasteners down and then slide the axles in and torque the fasteners holding the axles on rebuilding the rear axle. Everything went together in that last bit very smoothly. One thing that most of you might have noticed by now is that the rear axle doesn't have any brakes. I removed the drum brakes because they were disgusting and I don't want to deal with drum brakes on this vehicle. So a future project is going to be making a disc brake set up for the rear axles. I know that you can buy some kits online but this seems like a fun project to be able to design the bracket and pick out a caliper and a disc myself. We're gonna work on that in the future, but for now, the rear diff is finally assembled. It feels great. Everything is exactly the way I want it to be. So we will put this to the side and in the next one, we will pull up my two transmissions and start tearing them down and talk about what I plan on doing with that. I apologize for this video being a little bit longer than usual. There was a lot to do to get this back together in one video, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to help support the channel, there is a short paragraph in the description that you can read that'll tell you how. I look forward to starting the transmissions next. In the meantime, go out and do something fun, go out and do something enjoyable and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.